Hi, you all. I'm back. This time I'm going to do a painting. I'm going to do this bottle top. I would suggest, so that you don't have any problems with your paint, make sure your hands are clean. You have oil on your hands, and it can transfer to your canvas, and then you see the camera's coming through, and it's because there was oil that was deposited on there. I use a little bit of baby powder to put my gloves on. I am a retired tattoo artist, and I've had to have gloves on hours and hours and hours. Because a tattoo, if you're sitting for four hours, you not only get cramped up, but your hands are more likely to sweat. Okay, I've pre-mixed my deco art with Floetrol and my mixture. My mixture bottle is in the other room. It's a Floetrol bottle. And I've got pre-mixed with silicone already in my paints. I'm trying to make this a little easier so that I'm not taking up a lot of your time watching me play with this. There's my pink. My brown. Perfect consistency. I don't know if you can see that. But that's the way we want it. You can tell if you store your paints what has heavy duty silicone, CRC in it, and what doesn't. Because there's a heavy odor to CRC compared to the smell of deco paints. This is like a mustard color. Some of these colors I've made myself. Because it just wasn't. And, and it is. It's a mustard color. I don't know if you can see that. But that's the consistency you want. And that was from overnight. I had to rest up. I mowed the lawn and it took a lot out of me. Always start out with your lightest color. I don't like using white, but I will just to start out with. I don't like doing the whole canvas. Because I just have this problem. Like it's my worst enemy, white. So... It's just to help the ratio of paint I've got. And I don't want to make it too thin. The la first color you put in is the last one that's going to come out. So you don't want to start out with your darkest color. I'm going to start out with pink. I need about half of this cup. This is a five ounce cup. I need about two and a half 
to three ounces for an eight by 10 canvas. Okay, there's the yellow. And you don't want to add too much of a dark color because it can take over your painting really fast and you end up with a painting that you have to paint over. And don't be afraid to, if, to paint over a painting if you don't like it. Just make sure it's really clean. Right now I'm using window glass cleaner, window and countertop cleaner, and one or two swipes with a paper towel, and that foam from the Dollar Tree uh, takes care of the uh, silicone residue, but you don't want to paint over an old painting and not take care of the silicone. Because when you varnish it, you're going to have to use something to remove the silicone or the varnish will not stick. I've tried many varnishes. I started out with decoupage. Not. It tends to crack and craze. Then I went to uh, wax, mid-wax, and that one's kind of hard to deal with too. You, I had to thin it down and then I ended up with five or six coats. But now I'm using Liquitex high gloss and it's coming out awesome. But if you listen to everybody you're not going to get the same as they get reactions because they're using different paints and they're using different mediums. I've seen Deco Art has just come out with a medium and a top coat of their own. Right now I can't afford it so I'm sticking with right with what I've got. I know I'm doing a lot of talking. And I want to get this information down. I cannot keep driving for Lyft and Uber because of my back and sitting in a car for a long period of time. It's wearing on me. And if you get good enough, you can sell on SD or eBay. There's not a lot of information out there on how to get started, but there's a fella that seems to give you the ins and outs of it, of how to set up your channel and all of that on YouTube. I'm not going in any special order now. And I'm not going to use any more white because white is my enemy. I'm going to do a bottle bottom pour and see what I get. a little more white in there. Yeah. If your paint stays on top like this, it's because I'm holding it down low. If you want the color to, to really hit the bottom, pour from above. I don't want it to exactly do that. And my 
plastic cup is just about ready. I'm going to pour just a little bit more silicone in. One drop should be fine because there's already silicone in it. And then they say do three swirls. I only like two because this is going to be poured over this little cup. Let me get my paints out of the way. And let's begin. Let's see what we can come up with. I enjoy doing this with oils, which I'm working on a gigantic rose, and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for the background of this giant rose for a friend, a dear friend that I met since I've moved up here. He loved the rose so much that now I've got to finish it. And I was thinking of doing the dirty pour around the outside and taking my airbrush and blowing paint out from the rose. Now, my brown did not take over. As a matter of fact, it looks like it is just turned to mud. I can see the rings of color. Here comes the white. I leveled this and it didn't seem to make a difference. It's still going to my right. I saw a lady tonight that when she lifted her cup, bottom, She actually put paint in there. I want to try to keep it on the canvas. Trying to keep the uh, Keep it flowing but it's not wanting to do that so I'm going to move it back to the middle and then lift it up now I'll go and try to take care of my colors on my corners I do not see a lot of cells developing. Who knows? Silicone may evaporate out, but with a lid, I wouldn't have thought it would. I did put one drop in. My yellow is what's taking over. And my brown must have had a, a blue to it because I'm getting some green streaks up in here. I, I am developing cells. Looky there. Take it easy. I'm I'm losing the rings from uh, 
the pouring. But I've got more paint on one side than I do the other. So I'm going to try to help it along. A lot of people will put a white base down. That helps the paint move. I can help it with my finger. I don't want to lose my center from the bo bottle bottom. Okay. Now, let's shoot this baby back this way. I am getting cells, and I have not torched it or hit it with a heat gun. But if you're a crafter, you've got those tools. If you see canvas, you may have to pick this up and uh, the drippings for a little bit. I'm going to help it come over the edge. For a little while after you've already got your painting settled, you might have to come back and touch up. And there's no rule saying you don't have to, that you don't can't do it. I have push pins on the bottom. We definitely don't want a fingerprint in there. I'm seeing thin areas. So I'm touching it up. This basically is my middle. The white kind of did its own thing and it will. I don't want this much dark on this end. So... I'm going to try to pour some off without losing cells. Oh. Move it back to a position you like. I'm getting some really interesting cells. Here, I'm not seeing any. And I forgot a rag. I've got to be able to wipe my hands off without doing it on my hospital gown. I get it dirty enough. I use it as my painter's smock. Because when I want to paint, I don't want to change clothes. I just pop this baby on over my head. And I'm good to go. I don't know what the other side looks like. I got this corner to take care of. Make sure you get your corners. There's nothing more unprofessional than, oh, usually if you get your fingers in it like I do, you can fix it. Every time I move it, I remove paint. See, I'm seeing some thin areas popping up. That's why I'm going over it. And that seems to happen when I use white. I don't know why. Because a lot of the areas don't have white. But there's nothing saying that you can't just sit here and daub them. But you want a professional job as professional as you can get 
and if it means taking a little time fixing your sides or even making changes to your uh, painting. Now I'm going to be right back. I've got to get me a wet towel. It's a damp one and I use it for uh, cleaning my hands off because I don't want to use my heat gun or my torch with a whole bunch of paint on my hands and then it looks like I should have thrown it away a week later. <coughs> I'm going to try my torch. To me, the torch is new. I'm going to focus on the areas that have very few cells, if any. Silicone, if it's set for a while, will rise to the surface of your pre-prepared paints. And I just tried to set that on fire. You can't be too close. I watched a video where the lady actually, uh, I had fire. I'm not getting very many cells compared to uh, Sorry about that. After your painting sets for a while, cells may come up. Now, right there, I scorched it. So I got to fix that. Okay. And I've got a situation going here where I've got some one streak of brown and I don't particularly like it. If I had two, I wouldn't have a problem. But one streak of brown looks kind of funky. There's a little bit of brown around that cell. This is a paint skewer cut in half. Took an emery board to the other side. You can make all kinds of designs that you want to make using the point. Just drag it along the picture. I want some interest. In these areas where nothing has happened. It just breaks up straight lines. To me, this is very relaxing. And I hope it is for you too. 
I really enjoy these ladies on the internet, on YouTube, that do these paintings. I sit for hours in the morning when I drink my coffee. And what they've painted. Now there's part of that. I don't know how this is going to work. But you can try anything. to put interest in your painting. Now this is the area that I torched up. And I'm just trying to fix it. Well, I think that might have done it. Yeah, every once in a while I get nervous. Yes, that worked out. Let me see if I can do that again. Just a little touch of it there. I'm not fond of the white, and it knows it. The def it definitely knows that I have a problem with it. There's all kinds of things you can do with it if you want to sit and take the time. Sometimes there's just areas you don't like and you can you can just basically do anything. There's a lady called Miriam. She's another one to uh, spend time watching. She's great at giving information. She takes her time and explains everything. I really like her. Miriam's nature. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. I'm done. And I hope.
hope you all have a wonderful night. And let's think about Mother's Day that's coming. And this is my picture. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and share me. I so enjoy being with you and you spending your time with me. Be blessed and have a great evening.